This is the Creating Wealth Through Self-Storage show by Mark Helm. Nothing Mark shares with you guarantees your success in the self-storage business. This is for informational purposes only. There are no calls to action and nothing said or implied is a call for investment money into self-storage or any other asset class. You are responsible for your success in the self-storage business or any endeavor in life. Enjoy the show and here is Mark Helm. Let's talk about average and median incomes in a self-storage trade area. My name's Mark Helm and I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self-Storage. I'm also the creator of lots of training that's designed to support the small investor who wants to get into self-storage business or who wants to grow their self-storage business. You can find out more about the free training I have and the paid for training at Creating Wealth through selfstorage.com. Now, I didn't attend the most recent Self Storage Association SSA convention in Las Vegas, but I have been reading a lot of and studying a lot and watching some of the sessions that occurred there. One thing I found fascinating was Storage Mart, who's a large privately owned company, I think, a, they did some research on the compound NOI growth over the last five years using the data from 75 stores. What they found was that in the areas that had, quote, high income and middle income, and they're defining high income as 142,000 average income with median income of 110,000, and they're defining middle income with an average income of 100,000 and median income of 70,000. And they're defining low income as an average income of $61,000 and a median income of 35,000. Now what they saw was in the middle and high income areas, their growth, NOI growth over the last five years for high income, 36%, and the 34% for the middle growth, whereas low income was half that, 17%. Now this makes sense intuitively, you would have guessed that, but this makes sense because first of all, in the higher income and middle income areas, my experience is that the customer on average stays longer because they have more discretionary income. In low income areas, what I found was that the customers stay a lot shorter because they've got to watch their discretionary spending. So first of all, the average value of a customer is higher in the middle and high income areas. But also just as important is that in the lower income areas where or areas where the average stay of a customer is a lot shorter, you've got to, that space churns more and you've got to lease that space, especially in a lease up situation, you'll be running the same unit over and over again until you hit stabilization or pro profitability, then stabilization. In the middle and higher income areas, very often the same tenant will be, you, you lease in the initial lease up phase and that tenant could be there four years and you'll hit stabilization you know before long before that we had one project where the average stay turned out to be less than a year because it was in a lower average income and median income area and very often we would rent the same 10 by 10 three four times before we hit break even and then maybe six times before we hit stabilization so that it just takes a lot longer to move through the lease up phase and you're churning your space more in those areas. So it's harder to grow the NOI simply because you're very often you're having to offer incentives to have people move in and then within a few months they're moving out. It's much harder to get NOI growth in those areas. And remember, NOI, income minus operating expenses, is the game because that determines the value of your asset.
But let's take this concept, this idea, and put it into practical terms. So if you're looking to get into business or you're looking to grow your business, interesting information that Storage Mark presented here, but how do you actually utilize this? Well, let me show you what I do as we're looking at projects. It just so happens right now, we, uh, a, a new group that I've really never done business with has approached me and we're looking, they controlled a project in Carolinas in a market, not one of the larger cities, but a fairly you know sizable market. They're controlling the site and they just put it under contract we're looking at doing a boat and RV project there. And, you know, so one of the very first things I do is I look at that. Now, in the Storage Mart chart that you saw, they defined high income, they, and average and median income in high, middle, and low. I'm not exactly sure where they got their numbers, whether that was the average in the markets they were in or whether those are national numbers. What I tend to do is I will look at the market area I'm going into. In other words, in this case, the city, the town I'm going into, and I'll look at average and median income there and then i will look at average and median income in the trade area or the site the the trade area that that site is located in and i will compare that what i want to see is that in the site i'm in it's not below the average for the marketplace it's above the average for the marketplace i don't always define it as high and middle i just want to be above i want this location to demographically be above the average in that particular market so i mean this is the information we're going to look at is less than a week old so let's take a look at it but before we do let's define median income and average income you probably know this but just in case you don't so let's say that there are a hundred thousand households in a market area or a trade area that we're looking at if you listed 100,000 on a spreadsheet, 100,000 households, and next to the household was their household income. The median income would be whatever household income number is on line 500,000. You stack all of the data together and whatever exactly in the middle, that's the median income. The average income would be you take all those 100,000 household incomes, add them up and divide by 100,000. So you get two different numbers and I look at, we look at both of them in our industry and compare them. So let's take a look at this site that we're contemplating doing a boat and RV project on. So the first thing I did was I tried to define what the market area is. It's a little bit easier when you're in a city. So we took the data from the city. So we can see that the median household income in this market city is 51,784 and the average household income is 69,519. Not bad for a southeastern state. This, you know, in San Francisco, that may be close to poverty, but in the southeast, that's not a bad median and average household income. So the next thing I did was, now this is raw land, so I pulled up the address immediately next door and then moved the marker a little bit because I didn't know the, quote, address of the land. But I went online to the demographic uh, site that I go to and I pinned our land, our vacant land, and I pulled up a one, three, and five, uh, one, three, and eight mile radius. I don't know what the actual trade area is going to be. My experience is in boat and RV, the trade area is generally larger than it is for storage. So I'll, we're going to look at the three mile and the eight mile and 
draw conclusions. If it was a self-storage self project, I'd probably use a three mile and a five mile. Ultimately, the feasibility report's gonna define what that trade area is, and I may adjust what I pull up and relook at it based on the feasibility report. But to get going on a boat and RV project, I'm going to look at the three mile and the eight mile and compare that to the market, the overall market, to determine where this site sits income wise, demographically in that market area. So you can see in the three mile trade area, the median income is $60,825. That's higher than the city's median income of 51,784. And the average income is 81,112 in this three mile compared to 69,519 in the market area. So this tells me within three mile radius, the average and median income is higher than the market area. Let's take a look at the eight mile. This excited me. In the eight mile trade area, the median income is 75,000, 75,047, which is much higher than the 51,784. And the average income is 98,269 compared to the 69,5 in the cities. Even stronger than the three mile numbers. So it appears that this site is located in a higher end demographic of that market area, which is perfect for boat and RV development. So income wise, our numbers look good. Now there's a lot more variables such as supply and demand, uh, you know, construction costs, etc. We'll be looking at all that in the due diligence, but income wise, this site is sitting in the higher demographic economic demographic area of that marketplace, which is where we want to be, whether you're doing storage or whether we're doing boat and RV. That's just how we utilize and look at and determine where our site sits, our trade area sits and compared to the market area. We always want to be above what the average is for the market. That's how we do it. I'd be very interested in if you do something different or what you may do. After reading that session, that talk that was given, I wanted to just share with you guys how to take that information, especially if you were there, like on the court, in the field, this is how we utilize that concept as we're analyzing a site. If you do it different, I'd love to hear, but I hope this helps you as you get in or grow in this fantastic business of self-storage. I hope it helps. Good hunting. I'll talk to you next week.